Hey, what's going on guys? It is Dan back again with yet again another video. If you are new here, I make videos on fashion, clothing, and as of recent, costume design. And if you're a fan of any of those, I highly suggest subscribing, liking this video, and sharing it with a friend. So if you haven't watched the first part of the Back to the Future movie, I highly suggest you do. We talk about Marty McFly's outfits and his girlfriend Jennifer's outfits. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about Doc Brown and Biff Tannen's outfits. There were so many outfits that I wanted to talk to. I decided to break it up into two videos just to see how it uh, comes across if people like it more, where it's just one long video or chopped up a little bit. So if you haven't, uh, if you didn't watch the first one and you really just want to watch this one, basically Back to the Future, Marty McFly, played by Michael J. Fox, ends up going back into the future due to uh, Doc Brown and some of his schemes and he ends up stopping his mother and father from meeting and he is basically going to be unborn unless he gets his parents back together at their high school dance and then he is stuck in the 50s until Doc Brown is able to bring him back into the future where he can live his normal life. So basically most of this movie takes place in the 50s, which for young men had a lot of casual wear, camp shirts, uh, blue denim jeans, converse, you did have uh, some trousers, uh, waist length coats, bomber jackets introduced. It, it's, a, it's, a fun, it's, a, it's a fun decade I think for uh, clothing for young men. So we are actually going to start off with Doc Brown. So for the first outfit when you meet uh, Doc Brown and he is fashionable, it is in the 1950s and his outfit that he's wearing is this light pink button up with this uh, white single stripe tie and then on top of that he's wearing this shawl collared long coat with uh, this silver like animal scale print and it has the accents of black satin around the cuffs of the jacket and the collar now it looks more to be almost like a robe and the jacket itself is very eccentric which kind of makes sense because doc brown is this very eccentric guy i mean he's a scientist almost a some sort of a mad scientist or failed mad scientist until he found time travel I love this outfit because it's fun, it shows off his personality, and uh, yeah, it's just something out of the norm, which I think Doc Brown always proves to be in these movies, and his clothing actually represents that. So for outfit number two, he's actually wearing an off-centered slash asymmetrical plaid button-up. And it looks like it's in this like powder blue color with white and maybe pink or red striping. And you can see a chest pocket on the left side. Again, there's always revered collars when it comes to the 50s. There's not much stand collars that I see, at least in this movie. Actually, apparently novelty shirts like this were very popular in the 40s and 50s. I have yet to see one in person or online that's authentic, but I am on the hunt because I would love something like this. And then on top of that, it he has this dirty white lab coat over top, and I think it actually just matches so perfectly just because it's kind of this contrarian look, I guess you would call it. One's a lot more fashion forward and the other is just like, almost like a smock. There's nothing too special about the jacket. It's just a satin sleeve jacket. It just screams Doc Brown to me for some reason. Again, for this outfit, I didn't really get a good look at the pants. It looks to be like some black trousers or black uh, like suit pants. I can't really tell, but more so I think the focal point of this outfit is the top portion. It's that mad scientist outfit where he's wearing his lab coat. So for Christopher Lloyd's last look, it is this polo styled white shirt that has this red and either black or blue squiggly print with a contrasted black collar, placket, and cuff. So on top of this long sleeves polo, he has a Balamakan styled raincoat it is beige or stone, and for a jacket, it's kind of a classic look or fit. I don't know if I would personally wear this shirt, but I really love the contrasted cuffs, collar, and placket because it just gives the shirt a nice pop. Now, for the raincoat or jacket on top, he is wearing this 
Balamakan style raincoat in this beige or stone colorway. It's a classic fit for a jacket. There's no uh, fastening belt for it. On bottom, we have these wool looking trousers that are brown. This could be again. If you've seen the first video, I touched on how that Michael J. Fox's trousers were possibly this silk or nylon that was like brushed so it gave it more texture. These pants could be that or they could just be a wool trouser that's brown that's got this checkered kind of pattern. Terrible quality if you ask me because they keep ripping when he's trying to uh, grab the uh, plug but I mean who am I to judge. And of course you're still getting that quirkiness with the squiggly printed shirt. Personally, I think I might be able to deal without the printed shirt on this one just because I'm not a big polo person, but the combo of the wide-legged trousers with the uh, Balamakan style jacket, uh, just a home run for me. For the last character we're going to go into is Biff Tannen, who is played by Thomas F. Wilson. Biff wears a lot of camp shirts. He's got these rolled up sleeves. He is seen wearing jeans a lot, and uh, I really like his outfits. They are very simple, but he definitely hits on the young men of the 1950s. So for outfit number one, he's wearing this red long sleeve, and these sleeves are actually rolled up to his like mid bicep. He's got a chest pocket on both left and right side, and it is buttoned down to his maybe mid chest. And the shirt is in this very candy red or uh, bright red. Uh, colorway which is very uh, reminiscent of the 1950s obviously and then on bottom he's wearing these mid blue Levi's you don't really see them too much in any of the scenes that he's wearing this outfit but you can tell they're Levi's by the pocket detailing great classic 1950s look in my opinion and something that's definitely wearable today so for outfit number two we have another camp shirt this one short sleeved it is in this gray, red, and white plaid. Sleeves, yet again, rolled up. But uh, this is like a classic plaid. I, I really like this. I mean, it kind of just screams vintage to me for some reason. I'm not really sure. Either that or JCPenney's. He has a white undershirt, yet again. And then blue Levi jeans. He's seen wearing these jeans for most of the movie. Which, again, goes back to the 1950s. Very uh, um, accurate. Now... For my favorite outfit of Biff, and possibly for this whole video, is this amazing, amazing, amazing gray bomber jacket. Now, this bomber jacket is definitely from the 50s, and you can tell by the waistband. Usually on a bomber jacket, the waistband is made up of the main fabric, which is about two inches on each side of the zipper. So it's ribbed knit all, all around the waist, except for the very front where it has the two inches on each side of the zipper of the main fabric. But on this one, I mean, it looks to be like the ribbing is actually only on the side seams or like six to eight inches on the side. Uh, and it is such an awesome look. The bomber jacket itself is uh, very boxy at the shoulders and then gets extremely tapered to the waist. It's almost like a V when you look at it, and I love the silhouette of it. There are pleats on both left and right side of the jacket going from the yoke seam on the front down to the waistband. The yoke is somewhat uh, stylized, it's very cool. Uh, and I mean, the pleats, I don't, why have pleats on the front of the jacket? I don't know, but it adds to it. I think it's very awesome looking, it's like, this nice gray wool with these contrasted black ribbing at the collar, the cuffs, the waistband. And then underneath, he has this white t-shirt. He's always wearing a white tee. And then on bottom, of course, you're seeing these mid-blue straight, uh, straight Levi's. And uh, yeah, it looks that he's wearing some type of saddle shoe. Not really 100% um, certain on that, but... This look has got to be my favorite uh, of Biff and maybe this whole video just because it looks awesome. That is going to end part two of Back to the Future part one. Uh, that was the 1985 movie. I will eventually do Back to the Future 2, maybe even 3 one day. But for now, you are stuck with number one. If you like this video, give it a like. 
comment which outfit was your favorite. Let me know if you like the two part series or if you like the one long video. I highly suggest looking at some of the articles that I use to create this video. They are super informational and super awesome to read if you're into costume design. Follow me on social media, D-A-N-V-E-R-H-E-Y on Instagram, D-A-N-I-E-L-V-E-R-H-E-Y on Twitter. Everything's linked in the description. Thank you for watching. Take care. Have a good day. I'll see you soon, guys.